Hi, and welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, and I will be your host today. And today we have a subject matter expert, another smarty pants in the hot seat, who is willing to say, yeah, go ahead, ask me anything. So we're going to ask her anything today. And our session today will last anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. If you've joined with video, you are able to see our guests and the attendees alike. Um, questions and comments are always welcome, but if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it for you. So our topic today is hot tips to drive more customers to your Facebook business page. And I'm so excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Elena Reinhardt. And let me tell you just a little bit about her. So Elena has a company called Pro performance business solutions. And in this business, she offers a plethora of solutions that are designed to help her clients identify what tasks they can delegate so that they can free up their time to actually work on their business. I think we all have things that take up a lot of our time and a lot of our space and keep us from really doing the thing that we are the most passionate about or the reason that we went into business to begin with. And her services include managing your social media content and presence, email marketing, CRM data entry. Everybody has that stack of business cards sitting on their desk that they haven't done anything with. She does event planning and the list goes on and on and on. If you look at her uh, Facebook page, it says hashtag to do list chick. And I think that is a perfect, perfect description of Elena's list of services and things. So without any further ado, uh, I'm handing it off to Elena and take it away, Ms. Reinhardt, Miss To-Do List Chick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much. You really pulled that together without me sending you anything. So that shows what I've got out there in the, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So today I'm really focused on talking about Facebook and your Facebook business page. And some of the things I want to cover, number one is how come we even need Facebook for our business, how to drive traffic to your Facebook page, best practices for that, and also um, tips on ways to continue to grow your audience on Facebook. So I'm going to jump in with some of the things that I've prepared for you today, and I'm going to share my screen to show you some resources. If you have questions, um, I'll totally take questions, but if you don't, no worries. I'm pretty sure I can fill up this whole time with just sharing my tips for you guys. So <laughs> let's jump in. Um, I think, should I share my screen? I think I'll wait for a second to share my screen. So what I'm going to start with is just why do we need a Facebook business page? And um, the number one thing that I want to be clear when I am advising people with Facebook is do not use Facebook as your uh, pipeline filler. Don't think that that if you have a great Facebook business page, you're suddenly going to have so much business and it's all going to just flood to you. Um, what I like to think of Facebook for is to build brand awareness and to stay top of mind. You want people to think of you and what you do and have your content coming through your, their newsfeed, um, which is why it's important to post regularly, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then to um, see it as a direct platform to passively sell 24 seven. It's working when you're sleeping, it's working when you're working, it's always there, it's up 24 seven passively selling for you but it is not going to just make your phone ring. Um, and it is a great tool for communication. It's a great CRM for you to connect with people that you have met through networking, your neighborhood friends, your kids' sports teams, you know, moms. And it's just a place for you to pull everybody together, personal and professional, um, on your Facebook personal page, which you can then drive traffic to your business page from your personal page. So those are some of the reasons right off the bat that I feel it's important to have a Facebook page. So now the most important thing that we're here to talk about today is how do we drive traffic to it? So um, the first thing that you should do is build up your personal Facebook 
so that as many people that you have in contact with are on there, like I said, as like a personal CRM. Yeah, you have a CRM or you should, um, you know, there's lots of different CRMs out there and, and CRM is client relation manager. So if you have Facebook friends on your Facebook and then you build your business page, you'll be able to invite those Facebook friends to like your page. And that is a really easy step. If anybody's never done that before, just drop in the chat. I can show you how to do that. That's not one of the links I have open to show you, but um, that is like a very basic first step. One thing that people forget to do is to invite friends to like their business page often. You add people on Facebook all the time. And the more often that you invite friends to like your page by selecting all the the better chance that you will constantly grow that following through your Facebook friends. Um, a lot of times when we first set up our business page, we invite those friends and then we never do that step again. And I recommend that you put that on your to-do list regularly. Um, the next thing that I recommend is groups and to find groups that are a good um, place where your audience is living. So I am gonna share my screen. show you what I am talking about. So you would go to your home page right here and go to groups. You guys can follow my mouse. And then they have this great discover feature. So you can actually find groups that are popular near you based on categories, groups that your friends are in, I highly recommend using this feature regularly to connect into groups. Groups are a really effective way to build an audience. They're also a really effective way to find people um, that have similar interests in you or maybe interested in your services. And you can join as a business page or you can join as a person. I recommend you try to join as your business page if they don't allow you to um, or they kind of kick you out for being spammy, you can always go back in as yourself. But um, the more groups you're in, the better chance you will be able to drive traffic back to your business page, especially if you join the group as a page. Not all groups allow business pages to join. So if it doesn't give you that option to join as a business page, then just join as a person. Um, find groups that are, you know, things that you're passionate about. Find groups, so for example, I know we have Michelle on the call and I happen to know Michelle's in finance. So finding groups where maybe people talk about best money habits or tips and tricks about saving money and stuff like that. Finding groups like that to find your audience um, and then driving that traffic back to your page. Um, ways to drive that back to your page, you could share posts from your Facebook business page into the group. Just try not to make it be salesy. It could be something like for going back to that, right? So Michelle, you make a post about um, best practices for saving money, you know, I know a fun one. Okay. So you encourage people to buy a gift card for $20 every month at their favorite store that they want to shop for at Christmas. So at Christmas time now they have $240 worth of gift cards to be able to use that for Christmas shopping. So you make a post about that on your business page. You then share that post in the group and say, you know, I, I wanted to share this tip with all of you. And then you drive the traffic back with engaging with the people that comment, oh, great idea, and say, oh, thanks, you know, for more great ideas, please, you know, consider following my page. So that's one tip for just utilizing groups and getting into groups. If you can't find a group based on these, because um, this is obviously what Facebook is suggesting for me as a person. <laughs> so you're all gonna be different. You can actually just use the search function here. I have a client that just hired me um, to do this exact thing for um, retired military. So I might type in like um, veterans and see what groups, see here you can choose by groups and then look for groups that have um, a good like, amount of following or is what you're looking. So for Southern California veterans, that would be ideal. So for the company that I want to join, 
I want to join with, let's see if they're even an option on my list here. <laughs> they're not, but of course that's how it goes sometimes when you manage as many pages as I do. Um, so the client that I want to do it for is not listed here. So I may just join as myself and then um, get the opportunity to share a post from their business page to the, um, sorry, I'm not gonna go through the submitting yeah. questions part. From the business page, from myself. And then in some ways I can actually disguise it since it's not my business and saying, I saw this post and I thought of some of you in here, I thought it might be a good opportunity and I can share it in there for the client. And it's actually coming from me. It's actually my post that I created in the business page, but because I'm not that business, I'm just their social media manager, I'm sharing it. Mm -hmm. Give me a little like head shake if that makes sense to all of you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool, you're following me. <laughs> all right, cool. So that is my suggestion with groups. You can find groups through the discovery or the search. Another really good idea in order to drive traffic back to your page is to text or email the link to your Facebook page. And I'm going to show you a trick that I use to see if there is life on the other line of your efforts. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm not gonna talk about Facebook Messenger, but I found this great resource with really, really in-depth suggestions on how to utilize Facebook Messenger for your business. And so what I decided to do was show you how to use Bitly using this link, but you would use your Facebook business page link, such as this one, oops, sorry, my, um, this, the, <laughs> the drop down from sharing my screen is uh, getting in the way of my mouse, but um, <laughs> I can move that, nope, okay. So the facebook.com backslash whatever your URL is for your business, you can take that whole URL and drop it into Bitly. Have you guys used Bitly before? Thumbs up, thumbs down? No? Perfect. Okay, good. Bitly is the most amazing tool. I absolutely love it. It is a free resource. The first thing you want to do is be sure to create an account for yourself. I just use it through my Facebook. To get to Bitly, you just type in bit.ly to get to their homepage, create a login for it, and then you're going to create your tiny URL with a customized link. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now with that link I just saved, but you would use that for your Facebook. So you might make it just be um, Monique, capital FB, or whatever your business name is, FB, or just your business name. And unless you have a website, you might wanna save it for that. But the reason that you wanna do that is so you can track it. So First, you're making it a tiny URL. So I'm gonna take from it being small. See how it automatically made this little code? You don't want that, that's just weird. So now you're gonna use it for, we're gonna call it um, blog underscore messenger. It is capital sensitive, so you wanna make sure that whatever you're plugging in there, you're committed to. I also want it to be spelled correctly, blog. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. I'm going to copy it and I'm actually going to drop it in the chat for you guys to be able to use it as a resource later. I highly recommend that if everything I share with you today is like you're past that, then move on to this step, going into using Messenger for your business. I'm not going to get into that today, but it's a great blog for you. So Elena, can I now stop you? Can I stop you really quick? So you've made this, yeah. little, you've made this little, um, bitly small url thing what do we use this for mm -hmm. can you give an example i'm literally jumping into that right okay. now <laughs> so that's okay so right here my company has created 933 bitly links with our account and i'm able to see which my top performing ones are so my top performing link is www underscore zoom meaning it's been clicked 253 times so i'm able to track to see how often it's been clicked like 15 times on the 8th, 14 times, I mean, 30 times on the 14th. So I can see when you do a text campaign and you send out that link and you say, please follow me on Facebook. Here's my link, bit.ly backslash Monique FB. Now Monique can go in and check her bit.ly account to see, did people actually click the link and follow her Facebook or not? 
So it's a two-step process to be able to see if you're actually getting clicks when you sent out those text messages to be able to follow. If you do an email campaign on a different day, you can see if you got more conversion from your email or from your text with clicks. So the benefit of using Bitly is number one, you create a custom URL, and number two, you're able to track your clicks to see if you have life on the other line and if you're getting conversion. So I like checking to see what my top click links are so that I can see which ones are performing the best from different, from different um, platforms. Um, Alana, I, um, can I ask you a question? Can you, um, yeah. I, I lost you a little bit. I understand that Bitly is, you can create a custom URL, but the custom URL that you're creating is in lieu of my blog post. I'm, 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 I got lost somewhere in your, in your translation. What I was suggesting is that you do this for your Facebook business page. I just made it for the blog so that you guys would have it and I could make a link for you. But if I were to use it for Facebook, see up here at the very top is my husband's Facebook page that I'm going to show you guys something in a minute with. So you would take this full URL right here, not the whole thing because that's going past the home page, just your, up to what your custom URL is on Facebook. You follow me that far? Tony? You're talking about the whole page. Yes. My whole, like my whole page, you would just do the URL of the Facebook page. So let me go to their home page. So this is their home page, okay? Okay. And you take that URL, see? Uh -huh. Okay. Go into Bitly, create. Uh -huh. paste, get rid of their little link that makes no right. sense. I'm going to put right. to create whatever I want it to be. So pro performance, HVAC, Facebook, FB. For you, I had suggested you do Monique, Facebook. That's what I was saying. Oh, I see. And so then whenever you post your website, I'm sorry, your Facebook page, you can track the traffic on it. You can track if people so, are actually clicking. Okay. And let's say I want to do specifically my blog post that's on my website. I can do the same thing with any URL. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So make sure you hit save and then you can hit copy to send it out. But I recommend mm -hmm. doing this via text message and email because that's where people aren't on Facebook and you're driving traffic to your uh, Facebook. And I really it, recommend it. doing it via text. And you can just send out a text that says, hey, I'm trying to grow my Facebook following. Would you mind following me? Here's the link. And you just send them the bit.ly link. And then you'll be able to see how many got people it. are actually got clicking. It, got it. Thank you for asking for okay. clarification. You know what that's happens good. when it, you know it, so much, it doesn't always yeah. come out like in layman terms. So <laughs> I apologize. And I'm trying to, and I'm trying to follow your mouse and I can't see it because Anyway, so yeah, I thank you for the clarification. No, no problem. Okay, any other Elena, questions on Bitly? Yeah. Yeah, Elena, there's a, another question from Michelle. She's asking if you can use this for a Facebook event or Eventbrite as well. You can use it for any URL. Some things that you need to know, like best practice. Once you create an account, you cannot use the same link and change it. So, like, I if if Mandy created an account right now on Bitly. She could take my husband's Facebook URL, plug it into Bitly and make it something else. But I am now committed to this Bitly that I created for his URL. Does that make sense? So whatever you make it, you are stuck with it. So make sure you like what you do. Because once you pick what you're going to have it be, you can't change it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So okay. if doing, like, so if we're doing multiple events, like each one needs to be unique to that. <laughs> I can't use, because we do like a Tuesday Zooms webinar. So like we're doing one, we did one last Tuesday and then we've got a new one coming up this Tuesday. I would want to create one for each new event, correct? Sorry, somebody just knocked on my door. <laughs> Yes, each single event that you do has its own URL and you can make a custom URL for each event. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so much fun. All right, the next thing that I wanna talk about is um, boosting 
and inviting people to like your page. So my sample for you today is through this event, um, this post, excuse me, that I boosted for the Eskino Chamber of Commerce. And are you all familiar with boosting? Have you seen that as an option on your Facebook post before? Yes, no. Y yes. Yeah, Wendy, did you say yes or no? Yeah, okay. Um, sorry, I can't see you all. So you're gonna go to this part here once you've boosted it and click the people that reacted. And then you're going to go through the people that are not currently following your business page and you're going to invite them. And I highly recommend doing this to grow your following. Boosting, you're likely not gonna see a return on your investment, but you will grow your following. And the reason that you wanna grow your following is because once you have a certain base of followers, it makes you more credible in the Facebook world. So even though they're, some of these are probably not even real accounts, they could be fake accounts, but if they do end up following your page back, it's not that you're gonna get business from those followers, it's that you've now built a larger following for more credibility of having a larger following on social media. Kind of like buying likes, um, but having a more organic following because they have to accept your invitation. So boost your posts. Um, from the classes I've taken, they say you don't need to spend more than a dollar a day. So um, if you're doing a, a boost for 30 days, just spend $30, but you can always spend more. I recommend when you do boosting that you don't just send it out to the masses. Try to decide what you want your group to be like. If you have an event and your audience should be parents, then pick those, get your demographic down to parents. Um, within a certain region so that you can try and target that audience because if your boosted post does reach 2,000 people and you're able to invite all those people to like your page, you're going to have more followers that are within what your demographic is. Any questions about that? I have a question. Um, do you, what's the credibility um, line of, of likes? And what's the difference between having likes and followers? I have both and I'm over the 2000 mark. So I think, I think, I can tell you, I don't know this for sure. I think what happened was Facebook changed the difference between liking and following and they didn't want to remove one or the other. So they just left it there. So when you uh -huh. first started with a Facebook page, you would like that page. I'm talking like 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. at some point they transitioned from you liking a page to following a page. And I think they just didn't want to get rid of that audience. So they just made it so that now you have followers and there is some crossover. So it's not like, oh, you have 2000 likes and you have 2000 followers. So really you have 4,000. I think it's a hybrid of the two and they can't really distinguish. So they just left those alone. I'm pretty sure that's why you see the, the two different numbers. And I do notice that there's always a little variation in the numbers, but it's not like always substantial. Um, does that make sense? And for the yeah. threshold, I think me personally, if I were looking at someone's business page and they had 500 followers, I would think, okay, like that's a small business that's gotten their name out there. If it's a big company like the chamber, if they only had 500 followers, I would be concerned. They're about 2000 and I think that's kind of low, but I think it's a good number. So I think it depends on your industry, depends on how global you are, depends on how large of a net you're casting and that kind of thing, but definitely you want over 500. Okay. Elena, um, Mandy put in the chat that she thinks she can like a page without having to follow it. So is, if you follow it, does it show up in your feed, but if you like it, it doesn't? Or, or are those no. things not separate? It's interesting because I think, <laughs> Mandy and I, you know, we have some crossover in our businesses, so she may know better than I do on that. And I'm not 100%. Um, I know that Facebook is constantly evolving. They're constantly changing. And their, their current thing is not about liking the page. It's about you determining how you want to follow a page. Do you want to show up as um, just once in a while? Do you want to follow them? Like everything that they post comes to your newsfeed. And so it is important that you look at your pages that you really do want to be getting their news feeds and, and go in and make that adjustment so that you you see more of their stuff. Um, but 
I'm not a hundred percent if whether it's you can choose between liking and following. Um, cause I've seen it that some pages don't offer both. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if they're just like outdated pages um, or if it's like an update that hasn't happened yet. Is I don't know an okay answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and as soon as you know, they change it. So <laughs> it's true. Okay. So we've been talking about how to drive traffic to your page. And um, the last tip I have for you is to build a community where you're, you're the expert. So going back to being, creating a group and you, it's your group, you created it. Michelle, this would be kind of going back to like, maybe if you created a group with like, um, ways to save money and your group is something along those lines, obviously maybe come with something a little more catchy, but the, the idea of the group is people, your audience are people that want to save money. So they join the group to get ideas, tricks, and exchange ideas but you're the person that's going to be keeping the group moderated. You're the person that's going to be growing the group and the group posting quality content. Now, once your group kind of takes a life of its own, other people may contribute, but you'll always have the ability to um, filter out what they post if you don't like it, or you can have it set so that you can approve every post before it posts. But groups are a great way for you to build your following and then drive traffic back to your Facebook page once again. Um, another type of group that you may want to consider, and now I'm kind of switching gears. It's still on the idea of how to drive traffic to your page, but this is another thing that I really recommend you do, which is create a brand fan club with some people on Facebook that you are either, it could be your mom, it could be your best friend, it could be coworkers, it could be, um, I wouldn't necessarily say competitors, but maybe power partners that are out there that are, you know, like for Michelle, a power partner for her is a loan officer. So some people want brand recognition as well. You have a good following, you're active on Facebook, and you create a group, a private group for just you and those 10 people where you all agree to help promote each other's posts. And you share your post from your Facebook business page into that group so that number one, you get a share. So it boosts your algorithm. Number two, they then know when you share it in that group to go to that post directly and interact with it as in react with anything besides a like comment and then share it on another platform. When I say share it either on their personal page, their business page or groups that they're in. And if you do that, you'll see the volume. So what I wanted to show you Sorry, my stupid thing keeps popping down. If you guys have never shared your screen on Zoom, you don't know what I'm talking about. But there's like, every time you put your, your mouse at the top, it like wants to pull it down. I, I, like, no, I, I need that. What talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. So going back to this post I was going to show you guys earlier. This is my husband's air conditioning page. And he doesn't do a lot with it. So, you know, his average reach is 10. And um, if you do just one share, you'll see the growth. So yesterday I shared this post and it went to 73 as its reach. The average post is getting 10. So it got seven times more reach from just one share. If you scroll down to see all posts, this was one share he did with his own personal page that he shared and got a reach of 250 from just one share on his own personal profile. But look at this post that I went back to all the way to September because it's getting hot again and we hadn't created a post for him yet that was like related to the fact that it was heating up. So I went all the way back to September, found this post that said it's still pretty hot out there and I had it shared and it shared 10 times. All my friends on Facebook shared it. And so it ended up with a thousand reach. So it went from one share on my page of 70 to 10 times being shared by just my Facebook friends, not in any groups. They just shared it on their personal profile and it grew to an organic reach of a thousand. That's huge. That's a huge reach by just clicking one button by hitting share. So this is something I always preach whenever I do these. The gift that keeps on giving is sharing posts. It costs you nothing to share a post and it makes 
such a difference in somebody's organic reach. So I highly recommend sharing posts just on your own to support businesses. Maybe it's not a product or a service that you're really like in the market for, but it's a great way for you to help grow that following um, and also help out that person. And the other thing is to create your own little group of 10 or 15 and start asking them to, to help each other grow their posts, following and boosting and everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about how to do all of that? Does everybody know how to create a group? No. Just go to your home and you see this create button. You can create a page, you can create an ad, you can create a group and create an event, you can create a listing, a fundraiser, but you would just hit create group. You would decide if you want that group to be private, public, um, for your, your group, like what I was talking about with Michelle, I would recommend you make it private, otherwise people can get all the information you're posting without having to join your group. For the group where you create your own little brand awareness group, um, I also recommend making that private because you don't want people to know that you're like, you know, beating the algorithms <laughs> with your little, your little side group. So let me see if there was anything else. Um, is everybody familiar with Canva? Really quick, Elena, on, on that, when would you want to make a group public then? I don't recommend you making your group public because then they, anybody, like I could choose not to join your group and still see everything you're posting. And so then why would I join your group? I don't need to join it to get all the information. Wouldn't you rather, you're trying to create like a club, right? So you want everybody to want to be a member of your club. And if anybody can see what your club is doing, why would they join? They can just watch from the outside. So you want them to have to join your, your group in order to, to be able to see what you're posting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No? I have a I question think. for you. Um, <laughs> when would you want to create an event um, as versus just, uh, just making a post on your Facebook page, maybe with a link to register uh, through Eventbrite or something like that? Why, why would you create an event? Yeah, like especially with CWI and stuff like we've been talking about with your events. So there's a couple of reasons. First of all, when somebody's looking for events to attend, especially for like a, more, a membership organization, they're going to go straight to your events tab. So when you're thinking about for CWI, and we're just going to go to the, we'll start with the business page. Mm -hmm. So here's the page. So if I were thinking about, you know, I want some networking opportunities or I'm looking at your group to see what kind of events you guys have. I'm going to go to the events tab to see what events you have coming up. Great. And it shows me the only event that's coming up is, is Mandy's event on July 29th that she has you guys co, you know, co-hosting. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, you guys don't have any events coming up between now and July. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to go, Oh, I guess they're not active because I'm not gonna look to see that you guys don't have, that you have posts going up about events. Now, your posts about events are gonna show up on people's newsfeed. So you wanna do both because you want people to get reminded about your events and you wanna drive traffic to that event page to get people to get excited about it. And you can also make it people more aware about your event because you can invite them to the event directly rather than just passively posting it on your page. Now you can boost an event and you could also boost your post and you could choose to boost your post so that it reaches people um, that are liking your page or friends that like that page. Um, and that's a way that you could grow it. But if you were to go into the group, it's totally different. I know we got a question in the chat. I saw something. Do you want to tell me what it said? Yeah. Mandy says, she goes, I agree. Exclamation point. I look at people's pages <laughs> oh. for events. Exclamation point. Mandy likes exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you want to have your events listed here because people are looking, but if it's a members only event and it's not something you're trying to make, you know, the masses aware of, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it. My dog thinks it's time to hang out with me. Um, you can do it where you could put like, for example, um, 
with this virtual coffee connections. This is on the, the actual page. So in um, parentheses, you could put members only so that people know we're doing this event. So like anyone that's thinking about joining CWI sees that you're doing this event, but it's for members only. So then it's like, but you're not invited. So if you want to be invited, become a member. So you could do it that way, but with the fact that CWI has a members only group, here, you can put your member only events here as well. Mm -hmm. So you could create your events here. And the benefit of doing it that way is that you can then invite all the members. So if I were to create an event in your group, everybody, I obviously have access to their ability to do all of that. You need to be able to be an admin to be able to do all this. See this little click down here, Patty, invite all members of the group. So that is the benefit of doing it in your group versus doing it on the page. If you do it on the page, you have to select which people you want to invite from your personal profile, not from your followers, but anybody that you're personally connected to on Facebook, you can then invite. And if you do it in your group, whether they're your personal friend on Facebook or not, you can hit invite all members and invite them all 98. Excellent. So that's why if it's a members only event and you really want the members to get it, to do it there. And if you, if you want it to be posted on the page, then you can post it on the page. You could put members only um, just so that people are aware that CWI is actively having events. Great. Great. And it's about it showing up on people's news feed. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing with Facebook and algorithms. It's all about the more shares the more comments, the more reactions, the more likely it's going to show up and have a farther reach. And so that's why that creating that brand um, group that we talked about is so valuable because the more you share it, the more it's going to reach organically to a farther crowd Excellent. or just what, how their algorithm works. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? That was a great question. Thank you. All right. Anyone have any questions? This has been like hugely, hugely helpful. So any thoughts, questions? That Information you overload. <laughs> yes, it is. It's overload. <laughs> I know there's a lot to it. I was, I did want to talk about, you know, um, posting and like just in general, you know, it's important to post as regularly as often and to use the story feature. Um, the story feature is cool because you can see who's viewing and kind of gives you an idea of how much of a reach and following you're getting organically through story. If you were to hire a company like mine to create posts for you, we don't post on your story. So even if you hire a company to do your posting, you still should use that story feature. And it's a very small undertaking compared to coming up with content and writing posts. So I highly recommend that if you're not posting to hire a company to do it for you, um, my company, we do an average of three times a week. So you could still come up with content on your own a couple days a week and be posting five days a week. Um, but using that story feature is really valuable. And not that we're talking about Instagram today, but using the story feature on Instagram and then building your highlight section is a great tool as well. Those highlight sections don't expire and you can pretty much create like a video blog for a year plus. So that's a really cool feature. So like for Michelle, again, sorry, I just happened to like understand Michelle's business because my background is in lending. So, um, so for Michelle, um, uh, you know, for your Instagram highlight section, you could be doing, you know, tips and tricks with different categories. So like maybe like retirement versus like just a savings account, keep talking to your kids about money, whatever. And those tips and tricks you can put into your story and then filter them into the highlight section and kind of create like a little blog of, you know, your, your information. Oh, thank you. And you know, who's doing a really good job with that on Instagram that I recommend you following is, um, oh my gosh, her name just escaped me, but she is a part of CWI. Oh my gosh. Tanya Torres. She's on Instagram and she's in your field and she's doing a really good job with Instagram. So if you want to see what somebody's doing that I'm impressed by, I would check out hers. 
Tanya, uh, Lana, I have a question. Um, you mentioned the story. The story is on my personal page, not on my business page. So you're talking about stories on personal? Both. Um, you have the option to do it on your business page as well. Okay, because I don't see it. And I work on my phone app, so I don't know mm -hmm. if, it, if it's Yeah, you want to do it on your phone. Um, I can show you how to do it. We'll just go back to my husband's page again because it's easy. So if you look at, let it show up in a second. If you look right here where that little plus sign is, you see the plus sign? Yes. Okay. Do you see it, Monique? No. Right there. Do you see the plus that's sign? On your, that's on your phone app, right? Yes. Okay. Do you see the, you see the plus sign? No. You don't have it on yours? No, and the thing is, you're using the actual business app, not Facebook app. I'm using the Facebook app. Okay, but I'm using specifically Facebook business app. Okay, so use just the Facebook app then. Okay, let me and make go it to your, Go to your business page. Yeah, now I see that. Now I see the 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 ad sign. Oh, good. Yeah, so you just click that um, to be able to add okay. to your story. Um, I get that. To, then. Let's go to Lori's question. When you get a large reach on something, how do you turn that into follows and likes proactively? Is there a way to use that reach? Um, I don't know, Lori, if you were on the call when we when I was showing you how to invite people that like that. Um, hi, sorry. No, I came in a little bit late. I, That's okay. I do know how to, um, I've been doing that, uh, to go in and like, um, to, to ask people or invite people, um, to follow your page. I do that. But what I'm talking about is, is there any way other than just knowing that number like this, I work for a nonprofit, by the way. Mm -hmm. So an example is we posted a uh, event for a Facebook live that would be doing an interview and um, and you know had the event shared that event um, the people who are interested or sign up to go you kind of have access to right, right. but but after the event the you know the the I'm finding that it reached it had a reach of four or five thousand people last I looked <clears throat> that's not the number of people who necessarily clicked and watched the entire video after the fact or the people who attended. And so I was just curious if there's any tip or trick or something where you're seeing you've got this large reach on something. We're obviously going to do those more now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but is there any way to reach that reach? Is my question. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing that came to my mind was if there was a way for you to capture them like are you having them register in advance for the event we're not this is very new this nonprofit has never um, prom except for the population they serve we serve they've never promoted in Facebook this is kind of the first this much promotion in Facebook yeah. and doing things that are more open to the public because most of the people they serve it's in a private way right because we work in mental health space right so we're we're looking at different ways to make the organization kind of visible and kind of have people understand and do some outreach and in 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 the hopes of growing programs that will be more public um and so we've started with these baby steps with these uh actually started with giving tuesday now um and it's the one of the first things that's had that kind of reach and, yeah. and exposure for the organization. And so I was just kind of trying to figure out if there's tips or tricks or something out there in addition to doing it again, because obviously, you know, with that kind of reach, we're seeing it had a value on some level. It got out there. Yeah. We're not seeing the views of it. And, and um, there might be only a few hundred views compared to the 5,000 reach. You when you say saying? reach, it, you're saying you guys made the event on Facebook and then you boosted it and then it told you that it reached that many people? Yes. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to keep in mind with that is 
Facebook has to tell you that because you paid for it. And mm -hmm. there's real no, like they're not generating a list. Like it reached 5,000 and here's that list of 5,000. So it's like, sometimes when it says that you reached that far, that might just be because that's what you paid for. And so they're going to show that. Yeah. Um, but I would recommend coming up with a way to capture information so that you can reach back out to them or just posting in the event um, things like, please like our page, please follow mm -hmm. our page. Um, right. You know, we're trying to reach, I don't know what your current amount of followers is, but say it's, you know, 200. Well, we're trying to reach a thousand and we're giving away prizes randomly, you know, to the every a hundred people that sign up and it could just be something like a $10 Starbucks card, but just generating traffic to your page with uh, contests like that. Um, but if you, if you figure out a way to capture their information via like a registration form and you specifically get their emails or phone numbers, mm -hmm. you can push your Facebook link out via text or email. Um, and if you review this video earlier, I walk you through how to do that using something called Bitly. And if you yeah. use Bitly, then you can track to see if you're having conversion of sending that link out via text or email. Okay. All right. I, I, know, I, think I know Bitly. Elena, it, it's helpful to clarify what reach actually means, you know, because when you have boosted a post and then it shows you where it went, does reach just mean it showed up in their feed, right? It's not that it was shared or liked or anything. It's just it showed up in this many people's feeds, right? Yeah, they break it down for you based on shares. So they'll tell you how many times it was shared versus like the amount of eyeballs that, you know, supposedly saw it. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that the reach number is because I've spent lots of money on boosting posts, especially for my nonprofit, Lori. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my nonprofit, I think what we offer is like such a no brainer. And I'll, I've spent hundreds of dollars for kid events and all kinds of things and had zero return on my investment. So to me, I'm like, I think Facebook's full of it. I don't think there's no possible way that 30,000 people saw this and not one person was interested. That's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, well, we did see a lot of shares of the video after the fact. This, this, these videos we started are talking with um, Internet Crimes Against um, Children Task Force team members, commanders from across the country. We have two, one from the East Coast, one for the West Coast each meeting. And the goal was to just get information out there to parents about what's happening now during COVID because so many kids are at home and on the internet and guess what? That's where the predators are too. So it, it was that. And what we found is we had better attendance. The, f the first one we had some connection issues and stuff like that. So it, but the boost did really nothing. Um, Facebook is also taking a long time to approve those things right now during COVID. So you think you have a four day solid window of advertising your event and nope. So, so, um, so anyway, you know, learning as we go with the bog down, but um, the second time, the second event we had, it boosted and we had growth in both interests and attendees. So I think it did in that respect help us but we also saw a lot of organic shares after that um so maybe people didn't come but they came back searching for the video right. yeah so, and then i would just yeah. recommend that you guys put in your caption like keep in mind that whatever you're creating for that post with the idea that you want it to get pushed out mm -hmm. that imagine that whatever the description is is super clear like what the mission is and like a call to action, like please come back to our page and, and like our page or something like that because you don't know how far it's going to reach if you are getting that kind of viral response, which is awesome. Like, I don't have to tell you what to come up with for content, you've got that. Right, so just guy. push, yeah, so just pushing that out with um, when you guys post it, make sure that there's a call to action asking people to follow your page or like your page um, and give them a reason why like, you know, for more information or to hear more stories or because we're doing a contest or whatever, you know, whatever works for your mission in your industry, but. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. question. Yeah. I, I've done the boosting and um, mainly I just wanted to try to get more likes on our page. So um, 
But one of the things that I found is now, because Facebook and Instagram are connected, you can do it on both. And on Facebook, it's very clear, you showed where you can go in and you know see who liked it or loved it or whatever, and you can invite them. But I did this one boost and it, it I mean, it got tons, tons of, um, you know, hits on Instagram, but I couldn't figure out how, how I could actually do, like ask them to follow or to like our Facebook page. Um, I know that, you know, I think in Instagram, the more they see you, it pops up and says, you've liked three things, you know, maybe you should follow them. But mm -hmm. I was just curious if you knew with Instagram how to benefit from people, you know, hearting. They don't like, they, you know, click that they heart it. Um, because, yeah, I got like over a thousand on Instagram, but um, on Facebook it was very minimal. And obviously it was because the picture was very attractive. Um, yeah. And on Facebook, so, it shouldn't matter as much. So I will tell you what I've. I've heard to do, but I'm, I'm actually going to see if I can get Mandy to answer. <laughs> um, but what I've heard to do is to just go in and comment like back to them, like, you know, thanks at Wendy, you know, whatever your username is for liking this, you know, would you mind please following us or we'll follow you if you follow us and stuff like that. And you actually have to like take the time to write to them. Um, you could also like send them a, a direct message. Um, that's what I've heard, but I, I also just noticed um, because I unfollowed somebody on Instagram recently and it gave me the option to uh, have them unfollow me and that used to not be a thing. If I wanted someone to unfollow me, I had to block them. So now they've fixed that feature that, you know, because on Facebook, if you want to unfriend someone, you unfriend them and they're not your friend and they can't see you and you don't see them and you're not friends anymore. But on Instagram, it was it was not a two way road. It was like, I could follow you, but you don't have to follow me. And so if I wanted that person to stop following me, I had to block them. And now that's not a feature. So I am glad to know that they're improving that. But with that said, your question, there may be an answer that I don't know. I don't know if Mandy's available to type in, but. Um, I'm here on voice. <laughs> no, I agree with what you're saying. You pretty much just have to get in there and interact with them. It's pretty much the only way to get it going and it, I think sometimes too because she said she did a, a boost that was across Instagram and Facebook and sometimes they don't like it when you double dip they might have maybe um, you needed to go into Facebook and do it separately because I don't know you know the silly algorithm sometimes they get mad if they feel like we're being lazy and I'm doing air quotes as I say that <laughs> so well, I was being lazy so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I think it's dumb though, because they own each other. So hello, why wouldn't you just reward me the same? But yeah, that could be part of it too. So that's just my two cents. I'm not necessarily, in, I've done social media management before. That's why Elena asked me. Um, I'm not currently doing it, but yeah, everything Elena is saying is awesome. And I concur. Thanks. The thing with Mandy is um, she's really good with Instagram for her personal business. So that's why I thought maybe she would know because um, I, Facebook is just my jam. Um, I just like don't even have enough time to like learn Instagram. There's so many more features to benefit a business with being able to do events, tagging, linking that like actual links actually work. Um, you know, there's so many more things with Facebook that's just more business savvy. Um, and it just depends on your business, obviously, but yeah, um, Mandy's been really impressive for me with her like Instagram abilities. I ask her how to do stuff all the time. So. I have one other question if nobody else has, um, I, I know that hashtags, uh, are a huge thing. I'm just not sure if they're a huge thing on Facebook. So I was curious if they are a thing and if they, if that would be important to, to do when you're doing Facebook posts? So again, I might have Mandy chime in. This is my two cents on, on hashtags. So in 2015, I was using hashtags to grow my following on Instagram and got up to 20,000 followers using hashtags. And I now use hashtags and they make zero impact on my posting. But what I think if you're on Instagram, I think you should use hashtags because people expect you to use it. It's kind of like capitalizing the first letter of a sentence. It's just an expectation of your post. Um, it can be used as a search 
function, but I don't think people use it that much, but I have used it myself before. So it is, it is worth utilizing because you just never know, but I used to be able to post something and within three minutes, I'd have 250 likes and new followers from using hashtags. So it has changed, the, the value of a hashtag has changed immensely. Um, when you're on Facebook, I use it to grow the bold brand part of my post. So if I want to put like hashtag um, women helping women, hashtag stay strong, hashtag, you know, strong women matter, something to that effect, right? It's kind of like using it like a um, slogan almost, like it's kind of like you're putting it out there like this is the point of my post. <laughs> but people aren't really using it on Facebook for a search. Um, they might be interested to see if that hashtag is like well used or like well rounded. And so they might click it just to see what else is out there under that. But I usually just use it to bold out my post or make it seem like a stronger presence um, to make it stand out from the text. If you want me to chime in, I can on that. Okay. So my my little tip would be there should be three different types of hashtags you're using specifically for Instagram. Like Elena said, yes, you can use them on Facebook, but they're not as popular on Facebook, but the three types I would do, I would pick one, the big, so, okay. So I'm a mobile DJ. So I will use wedding DJ. That one's a high hit one. That's going to be like 10,000 plus posts out there, but it's still good to use it. Then you want to find one that's in your industry. That's a little bit more specific. That's not quite, you know, maybe it's like in the, only 500 to a thousand posts are out there like San Diego wedding DJ. That's a little bit more niched, right? And then you want to pick some that maybe you've created yourself. Like for me, I do an annual dance party and I've created one that's hashtag Mandy mixes dance party. So now anybody in the future that wants to go to a future event, they can go to that hashtag and they can see all the posts from my last five years of dance parties. So that'd be my little tip on that. Oh, that's very helpful. Thank you. And it, it, it actually makes me feel a little better because I'm kind of been doing that. So thank perfect. You. You're welcome. I also, um, when I create content, I make my hashtags. So like basically like say I take the description of today's event, ask me anything, marketing tips, Facebook, pro performance business solution. I take all of that description. I take it and I use it for the description of the content. And then I copy and paste all of that and I put it below and I hashtag the important words. So I'm just pulling out those important words, social media, you know, Facebook, whatever. I'm using those hashtags because they're key words to that post. And then you're not using the same hashtags every time you're posting. And you're also pulling out those important words so that if somebody is using it for keyword search, they do find your post relevant because like I do um, social media for Taylor Living, which does custom garages and flooring and cabinetry and everything, right? If I use the same 20 hashtags for every post and their post is about, yesterday I did a post about supporting local businesses. Well, yeah, it's good that, you know, it was, it was hashtag closet, but this post had nothing to do with closets. So the person that stumbles on it is going to be like, why did they post this? That's weird, you know? So it's better to put, make your hashtags relevant to the post if people are legitimately looking for it, but then still using some of those key hashtags that you use that Mandy just suggested on every post so that you're driving traffic to your social media with your hashtags. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Great questions, you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Well, ladies, we are about at the end of our time here. So I, and I think there's probably uh, so much more that we could get into and dive into here because every time we talk about social media, you know, it's like, Oh, I thought I had it down and now I realize <laughs> I don't know anything, you know, so we're going to have to do another one of these pretty soon, but these are recorded. They are, um, they'll be on the Connected Women of Influence website uh, in a, a week or so and, and be sure to share it with other folks. If there are people who wanted to attend and weren't able to attend, make sure that you share it. So you can also look like a super subject matter expert smarty pants to, to everybody else around you. So uh, again, Elena, thank you so much for spending so much of your valuable time with us. Thanks to all of you who joined us and keep watching the Facebook page, the LinkedIn page um, for more of these that are coming up and suggest your ideas to me anytime about other things that you'd like to hear more 
more about too. So everyone stay Thank safe. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Have a, have a great, great job. Rest of your day. Thank you, Lana. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Bye. -bye.